So Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Yeah, so today we're going to be doing something slightly different. We're going to be talking about how to do Dawa on social media and the do's and don'ts. So we're going to be making this an interactive uh, live webinar, inshallah. So I want all of you guys that are tuning in to interact. It should be fun and it will be good to get your comments and your suggestions as well. And it should keep it interesting as well, inshallah. So before we begin, if, could, if I could just get um, everyone to like and share this live stream so that as many people can benefit from it as possible and we'll begin inshallah so my name is Salahuddin Patel I'm from London UK uh, I work for IERA in the Dow department and alhamdulillah I'm really looking forward to this because um, there's not much out there in terms of doing Dawa on social media so alhamdulillah we've been able to put something simple together uh, and so hopefully this will be beneficial inshallah so we're going to be talking about the do's and don'ts on how to effectively engage online whilst giving dawa so before we get into the sort of the do's and don'ts we need to actually talk about social media and what it actually is so who can tell me what do we mean by social media and who can give me some examples of social media and you can type in the comments, inshallah. And what is your experience of social media? Is it good or is it bad? Because that's what we're going to be talking about at the beginning. So, you know, when it comes to social media, inshallah, there's a choice in terms of um, what you can actually do with it. Because it's a technology that enables us to connect to people online. Uh, through the medium of the internet through different platforms where we can share ideas where we can share um, You know things that people are interested in and Access people that we wouldn't normally have access to so it is an amazing technology because before the advent of the internet You know most of our information when we spoke about media was either from the television or from radio or from movies or from people that we met you know and this was the main source of information and now we have a new sort of source of information so inshallah can anyone uh, tell me some examples who can give me some examples of social media what do we mean by the platforms and the technology inshallah and please do type because I do want to try and make this interactive and it also makes it a lot more fun in terms of <coughs> today's live stream inshallah okay we have a few comments I haven't seen anything yet regards to social media um, so I'll give you a moment if you guys are typing inshallah and then we can discuss social media do you guys think it's good Do you guys think it's bad what are your experiences of using social media um, any sort of social media experiences you've had in particular when it comes to Dawa? Uh, what are your thoughts? Because there's a lot of opinions out there when it comes to this. Um, some people say it's good, you know, because you're able to connect to people and share ideas, spread the message of Islam online. Um, and then some people say it's bad because, you know, uh, it has a lot of problems when it comes to doing dawah online in terms of you know intentions in terms of um, you know people using it using dawah as a means for other sort of agendas you could say so alhamdulillah we have a message here from Samana Farahman if you use it in a good way it's good if you use it evil then it's a big fitna okay good alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah, that is uh, actually a good sort of summary. So when we're talking about social media, who can name some of the, the sort of more, most popular sort of forms of social media out there? Um, whilst I sort of bring in the introduction into today's sort of live webinar, is that yes, we have a choice, like it says on the slide, that you can choose because there's so much online content out there and there's good content and there's bad content. And obviously... We're talking about, you know, from the perspective of being a believer, being a Muslim, that there's a lot of 
uh, things out there that you can either use it for you to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or you can use it as a means to uh, commit sins and do, you know, sort of haram. And so it's important that we, and when we talk about social media, that we're aware of that, you know, and it's a technology that we should make use of. And just to give you an example from our tradition, where um, people had access to a technology in the past, but they failed to use it because they thought that, you know, this is going to bring about, you know, something negative and something bad and it's a bidah and all of these things. And that was the printing press. You know, in the 1600s, I think it was in Germany, I forget the inventor's name, he came up with a way of developing, you know, the printing press. And, you know, the Europeans at the time, they embraced it. And they were able to produce, you know, books en masse. Where the Muslims, they said this is going against the tradition of writing it down. And so they were left behind. And as a result of that decision, um, which affected, you know, the Ummah, you could say, the Christians were able to produce en masse. And with that, they were able to propagate the message of Christianity across the world. They're able to build educational institutes as a result of that. And because the Muslims did not sort of embrace it in the right way at the beginning, they sort of left, got left behind. And that legacy, you know, extends to today, unfortunately, where, you know, a lot of the Muslim countries are, are sort of catching up. You know, the West is in the lead when we talk about technology, talk about research, development, education. And one of the reasons is because of this. Now, obviously, we have the printing press all across the world now. Uh, but the point is, you know, they used it to their advantage at the beginning. And so it's important lesson for us to learn from is that whenever there's a technology or a platform, we need to view it under the lens of Islam. You know, what is what is actually beneficial and pleasing to Allah. So obviously today we have a number of different sort of platforms when it comes to social media. We have like Facebook, what we're using today for our live stream. We also have YouTube. You also have Twitter. You also have Instagram, which has become popular. And obviously, during the COVID period, you had TikTok, which has also become really popular. And there's many others. You know, there's forums, there's Pinterest. Uh, there's so many different platforms out there now just to get out your message and to share with other people. So it's important that we embrace this technology because it's another means for us to, you know, fulfill our obligation of dawah in a very simple and easy way. Um, but we have to understand that at the same time, you know, the majority of the content that's out there, a lot of it is not good and it's actually detrimental because just the way that what we're trying to do is trying to share the message of Islam you know, all of the good principles of Islam to stay within the bounds of Islam, the people are also promoting their worldviews and agendas. And, you know, and especially in the West where you have this secularism, atheistic, materialistic ideology, you know, you have this idea that, you know, you know, you make the most of it before you die. There's nothing else. You become worm food. And so, you know, there's a lot of things that are morally wrong that are online and we need to be aware of that first and foremost and secondly we need to avoid these things and protect ourselves protect our community you know and it has affected the muslims no doubt in a, in a negative way and so you know just like you know you have the hadith in our tradition about the blacksmith and the perfume seller you know if you hang around the blacksmith all day, then you're going to have that bad smell on your clothes and on yourself. But if you hang around with a perfume smeller, you're going to have the good smell, right? In the same way, we use this hadith to talk about, you know, your companionship and your friends and your social circles. To have good people around you that remind you of Allah and help you practice Islam, you know, and so you can get closer to Allah. And the people that are sort of doing things that are displeasing to Allah to sort of, you know, cut ourselves off from them in terms of the actions that they're doing. 
you know, and not to be around those people when they're doing those actions. So in the same way, social media applies, that we need to first and foremost be aware that there are these platforms that are so readily available now. You know, it's not just on your computer now. It's so accessible that you have um, it on the um, on your smartphones now, right? So literally, you have it on your person, ev you know, all of the time now. And so we need to protect ourselves. So it's important that you know we select the good content that we can benefit from. So you know, there's a lot of educational stuff online uh, for for Islam. There's a lot of uh, reminders. That are out there there's a lot of training that's out there and we should seek to sort of select these sorts of platforms so that we get closer to a lot and avoid the bad things so that's the first thing that we have a choice you know and it's important that we make the right choice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so I hope that's clear so before we move on does anyone have any comments or anything that they would like to add with regards to what I've spoken about. Does anyone have any experiences themselves of, you know, what I've been talking about when it comes to um, social media and being online? So if you have any comments, please type them in. And like I said, we're going to try and make this interactive and fun, inshallah. So that's sort of an introduction into, you know, today's session, inshallah, which is, you know, the do's and don'ts of social media. So before we go into um, the actual do's and don'ts, um, does anyone have anything that they would like to share with the audience that is tuning in today, inshallah? Any experiences yourself? Have you found yourself that, you know, that you've sort of changed your habits as a result of trying to sort of please Allah? Do you try and avoid social media or do you embrace social media tell us what you think inshallah so the next slide is we're going to go into the do's of social media so i'll try to make it a little bit fun here because what i've done is i've taken all of the letters of social so you've got s o c i a l so we've got six words here for the do's of social media so the first word is five letters right the second word is two words with seven letters the third word is eight letters the fourth word is 11 letters one word the fifth word is one word with five letters and the last one is two words with 11 letters so can anyone guess any of these words that are on the screen inshallah so this, this is to do with the do's, what we should be doing when we're engaging online and doing dawah online. So any ideas, and it doesn't have to be these words. It could be words that you yourself think of, inshallah, or any ideas or suggestions that you have when it comes to the do's. So does anyone want to share? Right. So I'll give you... A clue so the first one beginning with s is actually a sunnah the sunnah of the prophet so something and he told us to do this regularly to do this regularly so any ideas it's a word with five letters and it's got an exclamation mark at the end of it anyone anyone want to comment what do you think the first word is before I go into the slide itself? So it begins with S. It's five letters. And it's a sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ that he told us to do. Okay. I can't see anyone commenting, so I'm going to move on, inshallah. So the first one is to smile right and this is really important and this is with any engagement really whether it's online or whether it's in person that we as muslims when we're engaging we should smile okay okay so akane said salah okay yeah 
It wasn't Salah, but that's a good one. We're going to come to that, inshallah. It comes under one of the other ones, inshallah. So smiling is so important when engaging online. And if you ever look at some of the sort of, you know, popular uh, social media videos that are out there or content, a lot of it is basically around this idea of smiling, being engaging, being open, you know, and this makes for better content, right? So if you're going to be doing any content online, the first one is we need to smile, right? And you're going to, it's going to become, you know, become a lot more attractive in terms of your content when you smile. You know, people are more likely to listen. And it's so important that we do this regularly anyway when we engage is that we smile. You know, a lot of the times I see Muslims, unfortunately, they don't practice this. And maybe because it's unnatural, right, you have to sort of force yourself to smile. But it's very important when you're engaging that you smile, right, and you add a bit of humor and you basically make it engaging for the audience, right? So that's the first thing. So any comments that you would like to add with smiling. And also you can add, uh, when it comes to smiling, the another rest that I thought, uh, thought of was obviously your social circles, which we spoke about is important, is the circles of content that you're going to be engaging in. Make sure it's good uh, content that's produced by, you know, people that have knowledge, people that are practicing the deen, people that, that are really going to inspire us to do well. So a good example of smiling, who can give me a good example of an individual that produces online content, Islam, that they're smiling. One of the most popular speakers out there, we could say, and he's a da'i as well, because he speaks about the importance of da'wah and does da'wah. He really has a beautiful smile. I'll give you a clue. He's from Africa. And probably the top speaker in the world when it comes to Islam and reminders. Any ideas? His name begins with M. Okay, give me a few more seconds for anyone to type. Okay, so if you didn't type, but you were thinking of it, it's actually Mufti Menk, right? Mufti Menk, when you look at his content, is so powerful. And one of the reasons is he's always smiling, right? He's always smiling, he's telling jokes, he's connecting with his audience. He's using examples from, you know, the life of the Prophet Sallallahu and the companions and our tradition. He's using knowledge and he's making it engaging, right? So Mufti Menk is an example. And there's many other examples. But that's an important thing when engaging online, when doing da'wah. That even if you're on a chat, you know, you'd be surprised. Say you're doing a chat where you're actually typing. So they can't even actually see you. You know, when you smile, it has a massive psychological impact. So even when you're communicating through through text and you're smiling, it actually comes through. So that's the first one. So let me let me know what your thoughts are on that one. So the next one is the O of social media, and it's two words with seven letters. I think. Any ideas? Two words, seven letters when producing or doing dawah online. Okay, this one's a bit more difficult, so I'll just tell you. It's actually being on topic, right? And so this sounds so obvious, you know, when you're doing dawah online, um, but you see this quite a lot when, you know, when people are producing content and they're engaging, of course it's important to make it interesting, but a lot of the times, People start digressing and they go into different avenues. And this is important. When we're doing da'wah online, what is da'wah? We're inviting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're trying to get that person to understand the basics of Islam and to, you know, be guided by the permission of Allah. So it's important that we focus on that, that when you're in a conversation, when you're engaging, that you use a methodology that helps you stay on topic, right? And of course, make it interesting, of course, smile, you know, make it engaging, use stories, use humor. But it's important that you stay on topic. I see a lot of videos out there, 
start talking about one thing, then they start jumping to another topic. Then they start jumping to another topic. And why this is so important is because the person who's viewing your content, reading your content, right, they start getting confused, right? So we just want to make it nice and simple and clear. So make sure you do that. You stay on topic when it comes to giving da'wah. And don't digress too much, inshallah. If you do digress, always remember to come back, inshallah. And so when you're talking about a specific topic, an easy way to do this is to stick to three main points because, you know, human psychology studies have shown that humans, they really just remember three main points. Anything more than that, they tend to forget. So it's always good to repeat the points and also to summarize at the end, right? So that they get the point that you're covering. And so remember to try and do those. So that's another sort of tip you can use when doing online. All right, so I jumped to C. I should have asked you, but the C is actually comments. Okay, is to engage in comments. This is so so important, right? Because when you're engaging online, it gives you the opportunity for the audience to leave comments, right? To leave feedback, and this is so invaluable because what it actually does, is a person's taken out their time to leave a comment, an opinion. Uh, regarding the content that you've produced and also there may be questions out there so it's important that you reply to comments when you produce uh, content online and that you know you make it relevant and it's important to engage in the best possible way right and again and to be focused and again we can take the example of the Prophet Sallam when he was engaging with someone you know in person so obviously there was no internet at that time he gave his full focus you know he turned into the person and made that person feel special you know as if he was the only person that he was dealing with and made him feel like he was the most important the same way with comments you know it's another opportunity for you to share the message of islam in the right way to clarify any misconceptions to further the discussion right and you'll see videos that get good comments tend or a lot of comments tend to become popular right so more people can access your uh, content it gets shared more so it's important that you engage and then if you do that then you're more likely for the audience members to come back because they'll feel like okay this person has taken out the time to reply to my response right so very important always make sure you respond to your to the comments right any comments on the content that we covered so far anything that you would like to add with regards to this inshallah and also we will be covering more on comments in the other sections as well but it's just a general principle make sure that you go onto your page and anyone leaves a message you engage in comments so if you have any questions please do type them in and don't forget to like and share this video so the next one is the I. So, any ideas? It's one word, it's 11 letters. So, when we're producing content online, we want it to be I. Any ideas? It's quite difficult, but I thought that maybe we could add um, a bit of um, interaction here. And I've given away a clue. Any ideas on producing good content online and the do's? Okay, no one's responding. So make the content interactive and interesting, right? And you can do this in a number of ways now. You know, um, you can do quizzes, you can ask your audience questions. You know, you can ask for the opinions. Um, and so this is an, a great way for you to make your content interactive. And by making it interactive, it becomes interesting. And the more likely the audience is going to listen to what you say, you know, it's going to be more engaging. And that's what you want from your content, is that the content that you're producing, when you're talking about Dawah online, you know, make it interactive. Don't just make it like a sermon 
like you're preaching to someone because no one wants to listen to that right when you're doing dawah dawah is all about having an online conversation right which means it's two-way right and if your content is interesting and if there's good stories in there if there's you know some level of interaction where they can leave their opinions maybe you put up a quiz maybe you put up an image you know ask people for their opinions these are great ways to make your content interactive and also you know by using good imagery as well it's very important that keeps it interesting to use good video so whether you use stock footage that's already out there or if you use you know footage that you film make it interesting make it appealing so that the audience members again are going to be interested in the way that you're sharing the message of Islam and if you do so you will find that you know look at the end of the day when it comes to dawah there are millions of people searching for the truth right millions of people that are engaging online right and they're looking for something different they're looking for the answer to their lives what is the purpose of their life they're looking for ways that they can you know be happy in life feel fulfilled and there's so many other ideologies out there but when it comes to islam we need to make it interactive we need to make it relevant in the 21st century right so make your content interactive right make it engaging okay so the next one is a and it's five letters so i'll give you a clue someone mentioned an aspect of a earlier when they said salah so it's linked to salah but it begins with a this should be easy it's five letters any ideas think about the dean think about maybe the fundamental aspect of the deen and think about dawah when we're doing dawah we're sharing the message of islam and we're also sharing the message of begin today any ideas the next letter is l so you got a l and then three more letters no anyone anyone want to type in the answer Kano was close it's actually allah so this is really important right that when you're producing content online that way it may sound so obvious like why are you mentioning allah because you know we're doing dawah but it's important that not only that you know you're focusing on the message of islam right and you're doing all of the things in terms of you know smiling making sure it's on topic you're dealing with the comments you're making it interesting and interactive and engaging is that you need to understand that the first and foremost thing when it comes to this is your intention right that whenever you do any action and that goes with especially when producing content online is that you renew your intention for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right because you know unfortunately today you know when it comes to producing content online one of the key metrics and we're going to be talking about this in a minute is likes and views right how many views did my content get how many likes did it get how many shares did it get right and we sort of measure success based upon that right but we know that at the end of the day actions are by intention so it's important that we do this right and we have a very famous hadith that talks about intentions that we focus on allah is the content we're producing number one pleasing to allah is it purely for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so the hadith talks about on the day of judgment the first three people that are going to be judged does anyone know that hadith does anyone know those three people that are going to be judged on the day of judgment three people and when you hear the three 
titles, you'd be quite shocked. So you have one person who is knowledgeable. He learnt the Quran and taught others. So what does Allah say about those who learn Quran and teach others? That these are the best of people, right? So that's the first person. Then you have a second person, someone who's really wealthy. <coughs> and they give lots of charity for the sake of Allah, right? So they donate to this charity, donate to that charity, donate. And so when you look at the surface, see this person is really charitable. You know, mashallah, again, Allah mentions in this in the Quran all over the place the importance of giving charity use it as a means to get closer to allah to remove your sins you know so much reward help people you know share the risk that allah has given to you with those people in need and the final person is someone who actually strived in the sake of allah and died in the sake of allah you know like a shaheed so again we know this is you know has a very high status in Islam, right? So this hadith mentions about these three people being judged on the on the day of judgment. You know, the first three people, and so when you look at their actions, you would say, yes, all of these people are good. They're all going to paradise. You know, but what does the hadith mention? It mentions that all of them are thrown into the hellfire. You'd be thinking, why would they be thrown into the hellfire? The reason is because of their intention was wrong. So the action was correct, but the intention was wrong. The intention, the person who was learning Quran, teaching others, he didn't do it purely for the sake of Allah, did it so that he could show off to people. Like people say, oh wow, this guy is, <coughs> you know, teaching people how to read Quran. You know, such a pious person. And he was, you know, that person is, is basically getting popular and they want to be known as that person. You know, so there's ego and there's pride. The same for the person who's giving charity, right? Today we hear, you know, this term of people who give lots of money to charity, right? And basically they're seen as like amazing people, right? And again, this person gets thrown into the hellfire because they didn't do it purely for the sake of Allah. They did it so that in the other eyes of people, they were seen as people who were given to charity. So they were, had elevated status, not in the sight of Allah, but in the sight of the people, right? And the same with the person who became shaheed. He wanted to be known, like his legacy amongst the people afterward, that this person died, you know? And so it's actions by intentions are so important. So there's two main principles when it comes to actions by intention. The first one is that you do it purely for the sake of Allah. And the second is that you do it according to to the way of the Prophet ﷺ, right? And then if you do it according to those two, then your, you know, in your action will be accepted. So that's the first part of A. Second part, obviously, we said that focus your content on Allah, make it the center point, right? And so if you're, you know, if you're talking about anything good, always relay it back to, you know, the principles of Islam, the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, and ultimately back to Allah subhanahu wa taala. Don't attribute it back to you. Because we are a creation of Allah. Don't fall into that trap. Right? Um, and so that's so important. And thirdly, you know, one of the important aspects of this, and this is this goes with any type of dawah, is sometimes you get so caught up in the dawah that you actually forget to do the fundamentals. Right? You're like, no, I'm too busy. I need to produce this video. Or I'm in this conversation. I'm engaging. And then you miss, you know, your acts of ibadah. That you need to be doing or you're not doing the acts of ibadah you're compromising on the foundations because you know you're focusing all of your efforts into this so don't forget to do those things as well you know to have a balance basically don't get too caught up in just trying to produce content content so you get so many likes and views and you become popular you know you do it purely for the sake of allah so that's the a and we'll go into the last one and this is likes and shares so it's interesting because earlier I mentioned that, you know, this is a big fitna when it comes to producing content online. And so the way social media works is that it's media that's socially shared online, right? And so if you produce content that is good, the way it will be measured 
is the way in terms of the likes and shares that it gets right and so you judge content based on that and obviously we said that number one you don't produce content for that purpose rather you produce it for the sake of Allah but at the same time it's a very useful metric to show how good are you doing in producing your content like is it going far and wide you know is it being shared is it being liked because these are metrics you can use to see is it interesting like we said you know are you making it engaging is it something that people would like to watch right and so again it's important that you use this in terms of making sure that whatever content you produce you try and get as many likes and shares as possible so that as many people can benefit it purely for the sake of Allah not for you right and so that's so important right but again it's it's a very useful metric to measure the content that you're producing online if it's under the correct sort of light which is you know your intention basically because look you could produce really good content right and it's amazing and it doesn't get many views right and you've done everything and so this comes back to you know islamic principle of ihsan trying to produce the best possible content so using good equipment right good using good software um, and all of these things so that you produce good content that people are going to like because at the end of the day we are in competition with all of those other people producing content right and they investing money time and effort so that they produce good content that gets likes and shares so in the same way we want to produce content that's good that gets liked and shared all across the in the internet inshallah so the more people that can they sh share it the more people can have access to it inshallah the more you get the reward <coughs> so these are the sort of general do's and don'ts right so if we just go back just to summarize firstly is to smile make sure you smile you make it you know so your content is attractive to people they don't get bored you know don't be of the people that are have this really serious face you know, make it engaging make it curious make it funny use stories right but smile and like I said the best content out there you find that people have you know amazing smiles when they're producing content and this is a sunnah again of Islam second one was to make sure you keep it on topic right so you don't digress too much right and so you know it's important if you have points mainly stick to three points and then summarize it if you do digress remember to bring it back right to the main topic and comments make sure that you engage in comments so that people can feel that you know you're responding to them you're engaging with them this helps you build you know trust it helps you build an audience it helps you build your own audience you know that people that will be loyal then they're more likely to come back and view more content that you're going to be producing so make sure and even if you have negative comments you know I'm going to be speaking about this in the don't section but you know always engage in the best possible way answers people queries if you don't know an answer to a question then you know just be honest and say look I don't know the answer but let me find out let me ask someone, let me look online and give you an answer. So you want to use this as a means to in continue the conversation of Dawah, inshallah. Hold on, I just need to plug in Ugh. my plug before I lose power. Just give me a second. Just realize no more power. Okay, inshallah. All right, so the next one obviously is to make it interactive, interesting. We spoke about this. And always make your content that is Allah centric, right? Because that's what Dawah is. You're calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But also to purify your intentions purely for the sake of Allah. And also don't forget to do all of your acts of worship for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So make Allah the center point of your content, right? And have that balance. And finally, you know. A good way to measure your content is likes and shares, but for the sake of Allah, right? Not within itself. So I hope that was beneficial. We're going to quickly go into the don'ts. So I've used media, M-E-D-I-A. So these are the don'ts of social media. So anyone have any ideas 
on any of these words. So the first one, M, is seven letters. Second one is ten letters, which is beginning with E. Third word is beginning with D, which is ten letters. The fourth letter is I. It's one word with nine letters. And the last one is A with nine letters. So yeah, do type in the comments what you, how you found the, the content so far, if it's relevant, if it's good, anything that we've missed so far in the do's. But let's get into the don'ts, inshallah. So under the don'ts, under M, I've put modesty. And this is very important, you know, when engaging online. You know, and this applies to both brothers and sisters, right? That when you're engaging online, that we have to be modest in, you know, the way that we appear, the way that we uh, produce our content. So it's not just the way that you look, it's the, also the way that you engage. You know, you're not egocentric, you're not arrogant, you're modest in your behavior, you know, all within the characteristics of the Prophet Muhammad that told us, right? 